Hello ladies and gents, welcome to another video. I paid £186 for four Xbox One X's as a job lot on eBay and today I'm going to try and fix them. Hopefully I can fix them and at least be able to resell them and make some profit but I thought this would make an interesting video and should be a lot of fun. So with that being said, if you are new to the channel and you like this type of content then I would really appreciate it if number one you get subscribed and turn on the bell notifications that way you don't miss any future videos and number two you hit the thumbs up button early make me look a little bit more popular and make my parents proud of me so with that being said let's get into the video today's video is brought to you by nordvpn long gone are the days where a vpn was just a way to hide your identity online using a vpn not only masks your identity but it also encrypts and protects your personal data whether you're at home at work or out and about using public wi-fi nordvpn allows you to connect securely and safely wherever you are in the world. Personally, I use a VPN for several reasons. One of those reasons is to watch movies and shows which aren't ever released here in the UK. Another reason though I like NordVPN is because it allows me to bypass a ban which Amazon placed on my IP address just because I return one too many items. As many of my viewers will know, Amazon decided that they didn't want me as a customer anymore because I was too fussy when it came to product quality. By using NordVPN, I'm able to bypass those blocks and still order stuff with same day delivery. But the best part of it all is that it works on both Windows and Android as well as all major operating systems. You can get started with NordVPN by heading over to nordvpn.com forward slash console fix or by clicking on the link in the video description or the top pin comment. A big, big thank you to NordVPN for making this video possible. Now let's get back to it. So it's going to be easier for me to keep on this camera for now rather than going to the overhead camera and the reason for that is because I don't have a lot of room and I've got no chance of getting all of these in view on the overhead camera plus it'll be easier for you to see the front of the consoles like this anyway so let's see what's going on with them first so I'm going to start off with the bottom one so let's try and turn it on oh okay so the first one, this button is really mushy and it's not actually making a contact, so it's not pressing in at all, there's no click. So that means the front panel is definitely either misaligned or it's faulty. The sync button does click. I've got the e cups now. Typical. Oh, okay. So with the eject button, it does turn on. Okay, cool. That's rather interesting to say the least uh, sync button doesn't do anything I don't know if it does do anything until it's booted up though to be honest let's pop to the capture card okay we've got no signal on the bottom one interesting okay so no video output whatsoever so hopefully that's going to be an easy fix cool all right, so let's go to the white one. Oh, wow, again. Oh, all right, no, that one's just... Okay, so the front panel does work. However, nothing happens on the robot white one. I do actually have one of these, and this is a really nice console. Let's just offer up a disc. Doesn't matter though, it's a PS4 disc. Okay, so it's not taking a disc either, which means that there's definitely an issue with power on this one. So let's try this one. Okay, that one turns on. Yeah, the sync button doesn't do anything on that one either, so I think that is normal. I don't think it does anything until you actually turn the console on, or rather until it boots into the dashboard. I could be wrong. Oh, okay. Now it's doing something. Interesting. Okay. Let's pop over to the capture card on this one. Okay, and on this one we get E106. So that one's actually working. Or rather, it at least boots into the dashboard and displaying. Okay, number four. 
nothing going on with that one at all. Okay, cool. So let's offer up a disc on this one. And <laughs> there's a disc stuck in this one. Oh, hang on. Yeah, no, there's a disc stuck in there. All right, cool. Okay, so this one has an issue with the power button. It turns on but no display. This one's no power. This one's no power and this one's E106. Let's do E106 first. So I'll plug a controller into the front port. Let's go to reset this Xbox. Remove everything. Let's let that reboot. That came up preparing console for a second and now it's gone to no signal. I think that's my cable. I think that's my cable. I was having this issue on another console that I worked on a couple of days ago. So, yeah, that might be my cable that's causing that to flicker. Okay, so it's still coming up E106, so I'm going to need to completely wipe this using OSU1. So I've got OSU1 on a USB. I'm going to pop that into the back of the console. Let's go down to troubleshoot. Offline system update and boom. Let's see if he does that. Okay, so he's accepting the hard drive by the look of it. Hopefully that's not bad. Let's see what goes on. There we go. So it looks like this one just needed a reinstallation. Okay, it doesn't appear to be banned. Let's just try a disc. So I'll put FIFA 17 in. Let's just make sure I can see my online friends. Yep. And the disk drive works. Boom. That all appears to be working. One down, three to go. Happy days. So the first one, success. So there is at least two thirds of my money back right there. Let's just get to that one. So that's got also one on it for if I need it again. And that console will go to one side. Let's work on the robot white one, shall we? So the robot white one turns on, but it doesn't display. One issue with this is the back panel has come off. So I will need to do something about that. It also looks like this was a smokers console as well. It looks pretty dirty inside. But that's cool. That's fine by me. The good thing, it doesn't look like it's been opened. So it might have been dropped or something. The HDMI port appears fine. So let's get it apart and see what we can do. I'll fast forward through this, of course. And yep, that screw is definitely damaged there. That's a bit of a shame. I might end up needing to change the case, and I don't have a spare robot white case. Okay, so I'll get this part and I'll fast forward through it just to save a bit of time. Okay, here we go. So the console's out of the housing. Let's take a look. So the first thing I want to do is just try a different hard drive, just to be sure. So the reason that I'm trying a new hard drive is because the hard drive is known to cause no display issues on the Xbox consoles. So we'll just pop that in there and let's turn it on. Okay, I have unscrewed everything so it's going to be a bit difficult. So I've got to just take everything apart pretty much. There we go. That'll do for now. Okay, that's odd. It's not turning on. Did this turn on with the button just? I'm sure it did. Okay. That's weird. Right, well, we've clearly got some sort of an issue then. So I believe it's not going to be the hard drive what's at fault. I believe it's probably going to be the HDMI redriver. 
Okay, that is factory thermal pasta. Excellent. All right, so let's just get the multimeter and then we're gonna pop under the microscope. So the first thing I'm gonna look at is gonna be the HDMI port pins. Just make sure that we've got no damage to those. Although this does appear as though it's never been opened and messed with, so I don't think we're gonna have any damage to those. The port does look factory as well. So we'll just give these a quick nudge. Story checks out. Okay, so like I just said, we do appear to have some sort of a power issue. So I've got a feeling that the power issue is going to be related to the HDMI encoder as well. So I'm going to check the HDMI encoder itself in resistance mode. And the way I'm going to check it is by testing C50, which is a capacitor at the bottom. And we get 189 ohms, which is not good. That is nowhere near the correct value. We should be expecting anywhere from 3000 to 10,000 ohms, which means that we definitely have an issue with TDP 158. So I'm going to get that changed. And that should fix the power issue as well as the display issue. All right, so I'll just repaste this and then I'll get it back together enough for testing. And hopefully the HDMI read driver is going to fix the strange power issue and also the display issue at the same time. So the read driver is known for causing power issues as well as display issues. Something about when the 5 volt line becomes short and it stops the console from turning on. All right, what do you think? Is it going to work? Well, it turns on. So that's fixed the power issues. Let's see if we get a display. Oh, we don't get a display. So I'm going to pop back under the microscope with this. So let's have a look around this area here, which is the ESD boost I see. So I want to check for any shorts around here. Uh, that's just a bit of flux. So I've got my multimeter in continuity mode. So we've got a ground point. And I'm not finding any shorts there. Okay. So let's get a diode reading on some of these pins and I'll call them out 0 0.628, 0 0.584, 0 that's a ground, 607, 591, 644, 590, 670, that's a ground 670, 670, ground 670, 670, ground 670, 670, 670. 
Okay, we're getting all good readings around there. Point two seven four. Point two seven four. Six oh eight. Five nine three. Six hundred. Six hundred. Five nine two. Five nine two five fifty two they're all good I think I think they're all good they might be a bit low so the issue what I believe we have here is this chip here now the problem with that is this chip here cannot be purchased is that flux or is it a chip in the chip? It's really hard to tell. I'm pretty sure it's just flux. It was just flux. Okay, so the issue that we've got here is the fact that, like I said, we can't get these chips. We can bypass it. So what you do is, to bypass it, you're going to run a jumper from this trace here. So you're going to jump from this trace here, down to this capacitor here, and then from this capacitor here to this wire here. Then you also run a jumper wire from this capacitor here, down to, I believe it's here. You run a jumper wire from here to here, and from here to here. Now the problem with that is that's going to leave this console pretty much unsellable for me. I could probably still sell it, but only to someone in the repair community. Someone who understands what's been done to it and someone who understands the risks of buying it. And it's also going to reduce the value of the console as well. So what I'm going to do with this one is I am going to remove that HDMI encoder just in case we've got a bad encoder. And if those diode readings don't change on here, so... Basically, if we get no change at all on those diode readings, then that's going to tell me that this chip is bad and that it's going to be put on the back bench for now until I get a replacement chip. I can get one if I take one from a donor board. I just don't have any right now. So the diode reading on here is going to be 0.272. Yeah, now I think about it, that is pretty low for a 5 volt line. So I'm going to remove this chip because it does come from this chip to the ESD boost IC, I believe. Chip removed. Let's see if we get a different reading. It's going to be slightly different because the board's going to be warm. 294. No change. Okay, well, this one, for now, is going to be a no fix. So, for now, this is going to be a no fix, unfortunately, which means that we're going to put this to one side and I'm not going to touch it until I actually get a ESDIC which I can use to replace it because that ESDIC is probably around about a 70 to 80% chance of being bad. So I will wait until I get a replacement available, but it is what it is and there's nothing you can do about it sometimes. Bit of a shame about this one, but... It is what it is. I don't want to do an ESD bypass again. So I think the best thing to do with this one is just to kind of put it to one side until such a time where I get an ESD IC. I do have another console which needs one before this one. So I'll do a revisit on this one when it comes to actually being able to get the component that I need. On to number three. So number three has got no power at all. So nothing happening when I press any of the buttons. And that's the one that's got a disc stuck in it as well. So let's try and fix this one. Okay, this one looks like it's been dropped because there's a screw here which doesn't seem to want to come out. Let's just try and pry it up. And nope, that one doesn't seem to want to come out. So I might end up having to break that one just to be able to get that one out. If it is, it's no big deal. I do have 
replacement cases I can use. It's not the end of the world. So the daughter board here is snapped. Sorry, the front panel board here is snapped. So that could be why it's not turning on. So I'm going to get the screws out because we're going to need to have a look inside as well. And yeah, half of the screws are not going back in. Or rather not unscrewing properly. So this one looks like it's been dropped. Let's just try and... Ah, there we go. Yeah. Yeah, so it does... It does lift up, so I need to get the... Sink button out. And let's just get rid of this front panel because... Yeah. <laughs> It's uh, a little bit knackered, and that would explain why it's not working. <laughs> the connector's gone. It's taken all the traces, and yeah. So, the thing with this is, it would work like that. You know, there's nothing actually there, it's just fiberglass. So, it would technically work just like that, but... Because all of the traces are gone, unfortunately, it obviously can't make a connection. So, yes, I could probably fix it if I really wanted to, but honestly, it's not worth it. So, what I'll do with this is I'll just salvage parts off it. So, I'll salvage the LED, the button, the connector, and the module. I don't know if this is the Bluetooth or the Wi-Fi. I think this is the Bluetooth module. So, I'm going to need a replacement front panel. Let's just extract that connector there. There we go. And then I can get to the console. Okay, there's one screw. And yeah, I'm definitely going to need to replace this entire case by the look of it. Let's just extract that screw. Now, if the other piece was there which it's not, but if the other piece was there, then I would probably say to fix it by gluing these back, but I don't think it's going to be viable to do that because one of the screw threads is missing anyway. So let's just salvage what we can from it. There it is. So we've got the front board there. That's about 15, 20 pound, just for that little board. So I'm definitely saving that. And that's pretty much all I can save off there. It's good enough for me. Alright, so this has got no power, but like I said, the front panel's not working, and there's a disc in the drive. So, I did try and get the disc out with the eject thing, but I haven't got anything long enough. So, let's get rid of that for a second. I can extract the disc later on. Let's just pop a replacement disc drive in. I just want to see if it turns on with the disc drive, quickly. Ew, I've got some at all over that one. Well, it is a spare for a reason. So let's just see, before I sort out any front panels or anything, let's just see if it turns on with a disk drive. Let's have a look. I'm going to have to go wash my hands now as well. It does turn on. Ooh, okay. Let's have a look, see if we get a display. Actually, let's check this... Uh... Okay, HDMI support seems okay. So that's turned on. Which is pretty sweet. It does appear as though we've got no display though, as you can see. So I'm going to give this 20 seconds or so and just see if it turns off. If it shuts down, then we've got a hard drive fault. If not, then we'll look at the board. Right, okay. It's not turned off. The fan is still spinning, but it isn't displaying anything on the screen at all. I've left that for a couple of minutes and it's not displaying nothing whatsoever. So I am going to try it just on my TV. I'll try it off camera. If it does display, then I'll show it on camera, but I'll just try it on my TV just in case the capture card decides it wants to play up. It does do it occasionally, where it'll work on a, on a TV, but not on my capture card. So let's just have a look. Okay, and it's not showing up on the TV either. So nothing at all is coming up on the TV. So it's pointless pointing the camera at the TV for that, but it is coming up no signal. Alright, so first things first, I've got a replacement 
front panel. This is out of the robot white one. So I can use this because we may as well make use of the parts that are available to us. And also here is the eject button. I'm going to use this as a temporary eject button because I am going to be replacing the base anyway. And the base that I put in will have one on there. Yep, that's working. So let's get the disc out of this and see what free game we've got, I guess. Okay, let's have a look. Oh, it's a bit scratched. World War II. Oh, okay. Eh, bit of a crappy game, but that will do as a test disc, I suppose. Hmm, it's got something all over it, though. <laughs> it's a bit filthy. Uh, still, it's in better condition than some of mine are. Oh, right, we've got a free test game. Obviously, I can't resell really that, so never mind. I was hoping it would be something like Red Dead Redemption or something like that. All right, well, this definitely still isn't displaying. So we'll shut it down. And that's had a replacement hard drive. It is a one terabyte. But it has had a replacement hard drive at some point. So let's unplug that. Unplug that. I'm going to get the hard drive out of this. And what I'm going to do, first of all, I'm going to try another hard drive. Because as I said, this can potentially be a hard drive which causes no display. Even if it doesn't shut down after 30 to 60 seconds, it can still be the hard drive. So, I will try it, just in case. So, we won't get a display without a hard drive, but if the hard drive's got no software on it, it should throw us into safe mode. Hopefully, it does. Hopefully, it's nice and straightforward. Let's just drop that there temporarily. And I'll go back to the capture card. There we go. So it is turning on, that's a good thing, unless we've got another issue with the ESD I see. Let's have a look at the capture card now. And uh, nope, still nothing. Alright, I will try it on my TV just to make sure. Uh, nope, nothing registers to say that a HDMI device has been plugged in. And uh, no, absolutely nothing on the TV either. Alright, so we've got no signs of life at all from the display. Let's take it apart. So the first thing I'm going to do is what I always do with these, and that's going to be to test C50 again in resistance mode. And again, we're getting 183 ohms to ground. So we appear to have an issue with the HDMI encoder, but let's just check around here first of all. That's a factory port by the look of it. Just give those a nudge test. That all appears fine. Let's test these components around here. Hopefully we don't have a short around here. Hmm. 183 ohms. We might have another bad ESDIC. This one's actually coming up open line. We do have 12 million ohms on pin 18 though. Yeah, we might have a short here. Let's remove the HDMI encoder. Hopefully that changes the resistance on the ESDIC. Alright, so there's the old encoder off. And I'm going to check the resistance on C50 first. We get 4000 ohms. Good, okay. Let's have a look around C25, 4,000 ohms, okay. 
let's change the encoder. So I've got a brand new encoder sat just there. Whoops, was sat just there. Let's just leave it there for a minute. Start by adding flux. and then tin that area let's get that in the correct orientation here flow there we go Okay, there we go. That's nice and clean. Let's just give it an inspection. Beautiful. Perfectly lined up. Same that side. Beautiful. Perfect first time. Awesome. Alright, I'll just check the resistance on C50 again and on C25 as well. Just make sure that we've got no issues with this chip. It is a brand new chip. And we get 4000 ohms. Perfect. Let's check C50. 25 4,000 ohms beautiful she turns on let's see if it displays let's go baby That's yeah buddy all right and i've skipped signing because obviously we don't want to show the last user that was on here but this does appear as though it's working. And I haven't got a Wi Fi card in, so it's not going to work. Alright, I love the fact that you can hot swap that Wi Fi. Okay, it's going to ask to update, but uh, nope. There's a reason I'm not updating. And that reason is because I'm going to be factory resetting it anyway. And I've got also one on a USB. And it's the latest one, so it's pointless. Let's pop in a test disk. I'll use one of my own test disks because I don't really uh, trust that World War II. Let's just see if it picks that up. Yes, it does. Awesome. Fantastic. Okay, so I'm going to get this back into the housing then. Okay, well, the good thing is I've got a replacement case and it's a Project Scorpio. So I'm going to use this one. Should be all good. And that back plate is snapped. Well, that sucks. That sucks. A big one. So, I'm going to have to find a replacement backplate for this, but right now I don't have one to hand. Hey, maybe I can find a white one. Or maybe I can use that. Okay, well, that's going to need gluing to lock it back into place, but I can do that. I haven't got any glue to hand at the minute. I need to order some. I don't use it very often, and it's dried up. So, that is going to need gluing, but... I will sort that out, um, obviously I'll just do it off camera, uh, I might plastic weld it, I don't know, but uh, yeah, that's going to need sorting out before I can reset it, but that is absolutely fine, and we've got a robot white limited edition console, so there we go, number three, it needs a clean, but you know, we've got a robot white console again, I think these ones look really, really nice, and uh, yeah, I'm more than happy with how that's turned out, so I will glue that, but on to number four for now. So number four has got the mushy button, but it does turn on with the button here. So we're going to need to sort that out. So we might end up using a button off here to fix number four. We'll see. 
But for now, let's just see if we get a display on number four. I've got a feeling this one's been dropped again as well because we do have a little bit of a dent in the corner. So I've got a feeling that's been dropped as well. Um, once again, it looks like we're getting no display. Okay, I've given this long enough. I've given it around about a minute and it's not booting up. Again, I'm just going to see if it wants to detect on my TV. Probably not though. And no. Once again, not detecting on the TV, not detecting on the capture card, nothing at all happening with it. So let's get it apart. That one's got a screw loose, a little bit like me. Again, this might be another one which needs the back panel sorting. Uh, that should clip back in though, to be honest, I would say. It's got a screw missing there. Okay, and once again, it's going to be the same deal as before. And yeah, it's the same deal as before. <laughs> We've got yet another issue with the uh, the front panel here. Oh, that's right. With this one, I think when I pushed it in, it actually made a contact and started working. Um, but yeah, we do have a bit of damage to the front panel again on this one. So you can see there it's snapped. So again, I'll probably just strip that front panel down for parts I don't really feel like selling it with that but what I am going to do first of all before I actually take it apart I'm going to just remove the hard drive and try a replacement hard drive again um, once again we do have screw threads missing oh dear another scrap base oh there's the other, the other uh, screw thread well, I could technically glue those ones in, but I don't think I have any glue at the minute, so yeah, it's probably the best to just replace the base. Okay, that one's got an original hard drive in. Let's get rid of that. And let's try another test hard drive. This hard drive should be working. Let's just leave it like that for now. And this is going to be exactly the same deal as the other one, I think. I was kind of hoping to get something different, but, you know, you can't really, uh, you can't really choose, can you? You can't really choose, especially when you're buying in bulk. So this should turn on with the front panel. It does. Um, you know, I don't know if it's even worth replacing that, to be honest. Maybe put that one in my own and use... Uh, use mine in this one I don't know, I'll see uh, nope, absolutely nothing so once again, same deal as before I'm going to check on my TV so the reason I do this in a specific order is because it just makes diagnosis a million times easier and again, absolutely nothing. So, let's take it apart. Okay, and this one's actually had some work done before. As you can see. So, it looks to me like the encoder's been changed. That's definitely not factory joints. And the port has been changed as well. That's not factory joints either. So, first of all, once again, I'm going to test C50. Just see if we've got any dodgy readings there. 500 ohms, that's not good. 500 ohms is a bad reading. Let's check this cap here. Again, 500 ohms. I think that is linked directly to C50. We've got a million ohms on there. And pin number 19 is open line. Okay, let's get the HDMI encoder off. But I am just going to check these pins. Okay, that is absolutely fine. So let's get the encoder off. It looks like it's been changed before, but... We can never be sure when that's been done. Has it been done recently or has it been done in the past just because someone's had 
issues in the past. It is a very common thing that fails. This should come off nice and easy, it should be leaded solder. There's the old encoder, so let's check the resistance now. I keep meaning to set my multimeter back up on the screen, but you'll just have to take my word for it for now. 10,000 ohms. Beautiful. What about C25? 10,000 ohms. So, that's got rid of the 500 ohm short, or rather just the low resistance. It's not technically short at 500 ohms, but is a new encoder going to fix it? I sure as hell hope so. Let's get it done. Alright, well, a little bit of a jump cut there because I accidentally dropped something on top of my uh, stream deck, which meant it changed scenes. Whoops, never mind. Well, I've tinned that. That's all ready. And uh, pretty much ready to go now. Brand new encoder. Ready to go there. Notice how I always heat the area up first until this middle pad starts to flow. In three, two, one. I was close enough. So the reason I heat it up on the middle pad first is because it puts less strain on the chip. You got less heat stress. And less heat stress means less chance of failure in the future. That's nowhere near straight. But let me just get rid of that excess bit of solder. Now it should be straight. It could do with coming over to the left a little bit. That looks lined up to me. And that side as well. Beautiful. Alright, can we go 3 out of 4? She turns on. Magic. Spin, you bastard. <laughs> there we go. Alright, she turns on. And we still don't get a display. Ooh. That's not good. Okay. I'm going to try a different hard drive here. And still, even with a test hard drive, no display. Let's just try it out on the TV. Oh, this is going to suck if that ESDIC has failed. So, I am getting a display on the TV, but it is interesting because I do have some flickering going on here, and I'm not sure what the cause of that would be. It could just be a bad HDMI cable. So I'm just going to clean my cable and then I'm going to clean the port out as well. Still getting that weird flickering though. That's very, very odd. So now that I know I'm getting a display, I can mess around with my capture cards. So let's just see if I'm getting 5 volts on the pins, on pin 18 and 19. Okay, I'm only getting 2.4 volts. And that's not normal. 
Yeah, that's not normal. Okay. I think the ASDIC has failed on this again. Which is going to suck. So it might end up being a revisit. But let me just pop the original hard drive in and just try it on the TV. It doesn't appear to. Nothing appears to pick up at all on the TV in normal resolution. Which means that's telling me that the boost I see for 5 volts doesn't appear to be doing its job. Okay, let's get this replaced once more. Okay, I know that's not straight, but I do need to check which way it needs to go. It's an entire pin off on that side. So it's got to go left. She's lined up. And that side as well. Okay, I'm not worried about cleaning for now because if I can't get it working then it's kind of pointless so there's no way of flickering and it's actually displaying okay now all right let me swap hard drives quickly nope not by the look of it so it looks like it's displaying in low resolution mode but when it tries to load into a normal resolution it's not booting up Oh, that sucks. It definitely has to be the ESDIC then. Oh, hold up. That hard drive's just turned off. Hold on. Where's the hard drive? I didn't connect it. I'm a moron. I didn't connect it. I'm a moron. Work. Work. Come on. Come on. I see you jittering. Come on. Or is that just a shitty software on this TV? You're not turning off. Pretty please with a cherry on top? Well, I think I'm probably giving it long enough. <laughs> it's had just about a minute and a half. So I think this is yet another one with an ESDIC problem. There's no way two random chips out of a tub with over 50 are going to be bad. Or very slim chance. Oh, that sucks. That really does suck. But, you know, I don't think there's anything you can really do about it. Well, on the plus side... We've got two working at least, so I can at least make a little bit of profit and I'll get some either usable parts or I'll be able to fix them at a later date when I do manage to get some ESDICs. I believe that's what's going to be the issue, so as soon as I come across some I will make another video and I'll do a revisit on the two that I couldn't fix today. So that is going to be for this video, thank you very much for watching. If you do have any comments or questions, leave them down in the comment section down below. I'll always do my best to answer. If you do want to organise a repair, check out the description. There'll be a link to my website where you can book in the repair or you can get in touch if you've got a question about a custom quote or a repair that you might want me to do. If you do want help with your own repair where you want to do it yourself, head over to Discord. We've got a link to Discord in the video description as well. Almost a thousand members there and it's going absolutely fantastic. Big, big thank you to everyone for the support and for coming together as a community and you know helping this community to grow and become the best of friends it's great 
no really really is great i really do genuinely appreciate it everyone seems to get along everyone helps each other and that's what it should all be about if you want to support me if you enjoy these videos or you find them useful in any way shape or form then check out the video description there'll be a link to my patreon in the video description there'll also be a link to twitch you can head over there you can become a twitch prime subscriber by linking your amazon prime account and then clicking on subscribe on my channel and you can do that absolutely free it doesn't cost you a penny to do but it does help me out and it takes a little bit of money out of jeff bezos pockets so with that being said that is going to be it for this video thank you very much for watching don't forget to subscribe if you haven't already give the video a thumbs up if you enjoyed it and until next time i'll see you later bye for now